Hello to the curious and welcome to part three of our e-learning platform tutorial. Now in this part, we'll be looking at setting up our styling and theming for MUI, which means we're going to reset all our styles with a reset style sheet. And we're also going to have a light and dark mode. And with this, we'll be able to switch between them as we add theme toggler component. And we also want to make sure that the user's choices of which theme to go with light or dark actually persists when they make that choice. So if they leave the session and come back, that choice will still be made. So if you're enjoying the journey so far, make sure to follow me on the Hashton or join us on Discord even uh, and follow along as we're building out these series and like, subscribe, hit the bell notification and be informed of all the videos coming in this series and any other tutorials and series afterwards. But otherwise, let's get building. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is add some icons to the project. And we're going to use material icons to do that. So we're going to install MUI icons material. And once that's done, we're going to open up the next config.js and just make sure that we include this within the project so it renders with it. We're going to add a few other rules as well. So we want to make sure that we're using React strict mode and we're using SWC and we're making sure that we're minifying the project. Uh, we also want to make sure that we're modularizing uh, our MUI icon imports just so they work better. We'll be using this transform here. And once that's added, that's our MUI icons set up. Brilliant. So just as a reminder, this is where we are with the project so far. So it currently looks like this. Um, it's a dark background. Uh, the colors are a little all over the place. If we go to sign in, this is what it looks like. We log in, um, we see our login page, go to our profile, etc. So we do need to style this and we do need to theme it. And to do that, we're going to need a light and dark theme from MUI because right now we're currently just using a very simplistic dark theme. So to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our app folder and create a light theme. So we'll go theme slash light theme dot TS and we'll go ahead and add it. So we're pulling in uh, theme options as our type to make sure that this is adherent to uh, MUI's theming uh, object pattern. Uh, we're choosing right off the bat to make sure it's light. So we're choosing the mode light and these are some of the colors we've chosen. So MUI normally has main light and dark uh, within the palette for each main color. So secondary will follow the same background. We want it to be white essentially. Uh, and then success, warning and error. And these, if you notice, are all the colors that we had in our designs. So we set our color palette out in the first episode. And these were the colors essentially that we were using. Um, so these are the light versions of those. Of these, But yeah, that's essentially our light theme. Uh, let's do the same for dark theme and we'll set that up. And yeah, it's uh, very similar. We have got a contrast text here uh, because it is a dark theme. We do want to make sure that if at any point we need to have some contrasting text that we have an option there straight away. So we've got white for that or FFF. We want our text and uh, typography to also be white. Yeah, you can see there are slightly different considerations on the dark theme for this. Um, contrast text essentially plays the role of dark in secondary. But yeah, that's it. It's quite similar. So these are all similar success, warning and error. But for the most part, this is our dark theme as well. And these are going to be the core themes that we're going to switch between uh, on the project. Now, because we are using Material UI, uh, we are going to consider how we're caching on Next.js. And there's a lovely community helper that's been made called Emotion Cache. Um, and I'll add that to the project now. This isn't something that I've created, uh, but this is what a lot of people use on their MUI projects if they are creating a serious theme. And it's just um, essentially a helper file that uh, helps you cache your styles and helps you persist them between theme changes. 
Alrighty, let's open up our layout file and we'll start to edit this. So a lot of where this logic for updating the themes and switching between the themes is going to take place on the layout file. Um, and we'll, we'll start to update it now. So you can see here, we've got a really basic dark theme and we're going to replace this with logic to switch between the two. And we can also see we've got some metadata here, but we're not actually using it. So let's actually uh, update the metadata first. So we'll adding a, a title that's curious courses, uh, a description for what the, the app is, and then just some keywords that we'll use. Just above the body, we'll add our head. And this is going to include our title. And we make sure that we're setting that as a type of React node. And then just some meta information. Uh, we're adding our description. We're using the description from our metadata here and our keywords. And then obviously some author information and just information on our viewport. And you can see here we've got our body style here, which is currently dictating the colors. So we're going to update this slightly to include some of our theme colors. So we've updated our theme color to work from our chosen theme, which we haven't created yet, but we will do shortly. And this will pull in from the palette and the background and the default. So if we open up our dark theme, for example, and we go to background and default, that'll be this color. So that's what we're trying to pull in. And there's an equivalent one on the light theme. So background and default will be white. So let's go up here and add chosen theme. So you just need to make sure that these are imported. And we have dark theme or here already, but we can delete that now. And we just import dark theme. We've got mode here, but chosen theme isn't actually sure what it is. And to us, what this should be is the state of whether it's light or dark mode and what the decision or the choice actually is. So let's add the state for this so that chosen theme can uh, know whether it's a dark theme or a light theme. So we'll just add this above and make sure that we, so we've updated that. So we pull that in um, and then we have an initial mode. So what we want to do is we want to have an initial state um, for mode that it knows that this is what it is initially going to be. So is it light, is it dark? And generally it's gonna pull that from some kind of global state or local storage or even a cookie or something like that. So initial mode is probably going to be pulled from some kind of global state, local storage, or maybe even a cookie, just some place where a decision has been recorded that the user made to decide between light and dark mode. And we're going to do that by actually using local storage to store the user's decision. So if we go here and we'll add it just above, and what this does is it goes to look, it goes to local storage to get our theme choice and then stores it in initial mode. And the default for now is dark. So this is all set up, but we're getting it from local storage, but we're not actually setting it in local storage, which is what we need to be doing. So to do that, we're going to need to use some context. So we'll add some React context here. So make sure you import that. And then just below here, we want to make sure that we're actually storing our decision between light and dark mode. So we'll use a use effect here. So we need to make sure that we're actually storing our decision in local storage. And we'll do that using this uh, use effect here, using the local storage uh, method. And we're setting the item and we're calling it theme. And we're setting it uh, with state as well. So our mode that we set earlier. And going back to the context that we created above, the React context, we need to actually set our color choice in there as well. And for that, we're going to use we're going to use a use memo hook. And what this does is it toggles um, between the two using the previous history or the previous state. So between dark and light mode, and we essentially have a function that now does that. And it stores that uh, once using use memo. Now for all this to work, we need to make sure that we wrap this in context so that it remembers the choice and that we can set it in local storage. And then we grab the color mode from the use memo and we grab the color mode from here from the memo we just created and then finally but very importantly we just need to take this theme provider and move it so that was our old theme provider we need to use a new one and this is going to wrap the entire body this time so we're creating our theme 
and we're using our chosen theme, which is this choice here. And that sets off all the chain of events of local storage and React context to be able to do this. So this here is essentially pulling in all our efforts from above into the theme now and actually applying the theme uh, to the project and wrapping the body uh, and children and the header, et cetera, in that. And the next very important part is resetting the styles on the entire project. And we're gonna do that with an inbuilt helper uh, component called CSS baseline and essentially resets the styles on the project. And you put that after your theme so that uh, your theme essentially overrides it after that. So, so we've added CSS baseline here on line 71. And this gives us that nice foundation to build the rest of the theming on. Okay, so we've added all of that. Let's go take a look at the project now and see how it looks. So you can see now that we've got a very uh, different dark theme. Gone is the black background and all the uh, colors have been a little, a little bit more muted and a little bit more uh, homogenous between each other. But we're not really going to be able to see the difference until we, until we add the ability to switch between themes. And the only way we're going to do that is by adding a theme toggler in the header. So let's go to our components and open up the header component. Now we're going to need a few props in here other than user data. So we've currently got user data set to any, but we can actually update that. So we can set that to user data type, which we already have um, in our user data hooks. So you can see we've already got that. So we don't actually need this anymore. So we've got that now. Um, we'll also want to export this, but as a type. So now we've got header props available to the layout component, which is what we want. And we just need to add a few more props before we get going. We'll delete this, uh, we'll add a null check here. And there we go. So we're adding our color mode context from our React context in here. We're also adding current mode, which we also had in the layout. And that is just a light and dark uh, Edom. And then just a very simple Boolean to show or hide the label for the theme toggler component. Brilliant. And now we can uh, just add those uh, props in the layout here. So if we go here and uh, update our props, there we go. So we've added our color mode context and our current mode, which is using state. And we're just gonna set the show label to false. Right, so our header is in a much better place now to add our theme toggler, because now we've got the actual building blocks to feed the theme toggler with uh, these props up here. So just here, we're going to add a new uh, list item. So right here, we'll just add theme toggler as a placeholder to know where it's going to be. We've added some margin left auto because we want it to go slightly from the left of the other menu item so it's not connected. So it's not just so it's not directly connected. There we go. So that's the placement of where we're going to put our theme toggler now. You can see it there. So let's actually go and add it. So if you go to components and we'll go to new file, go to theme toggler, theme toggler.tsx, add a new file, index.ts. Um, and we'll probably need a style sheet. So we'll go, so we'll go here. So one of the first things that I can tell right away we're going to need is because we'll be using state is use clients because this will definitely be a client side component. Uh, we'll need to make sure that we add the props that match the new header props that we created because we essentially created those to feed to this component and do some prop drilling and, and just send it down to here. And we're going to create a very simple uh, React function. And then we'll just export default theme toggler. Okay. In fact, what we'll do is we'll actually put the label here. So we'll create a React fragment. What we're going to do here is we're going to do a mobile check. So what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if this is on mobile to begin with, because we don't want this label showing on mobile. And then we want to check to see if the prop show label is showing. So we'll just destructure that now. And that is connected to props now. And we'll just set this to false by default. So those are connected now. Uh, typography component, uh, the typography component, just make sure to import that. And the mobile check will actually get from a, a def we'll get from a default helper from MUI called use media query. And then we'll create uh, our own mobile check here. 
by using the use media query uh, hook. And we'll just set the minimum width to 500 pixels, which is when we don't want this to, to be seen. Um, current mode is whether it's light or dark. So we'll just add this here. So current mode, and then we'll add color mode context as well, the other prop. So those are connected now. What we want to do, format this a little better. Uh, what we want to do now is import this into the header. So if we go down here to the theme toggler, we'll replace that with theme toggler. Uh, we'll make sure we add these missing attributes. So current mode. So we've got some missing attributes on here, also missing props. So we'll add that now. So what we'll do is we'll sort out the props really quickly. So we don't need user data by itself anymore. So we can do props, header props now. And then here we can destructure it. So we're making sure to grab user data, color mode, context, current mode, and show label. So we've got that all now. Uh, and we can use that within our theme toggler that we've just added. So we've got the color mode context being passed and the show label option, whether we want it or not. So let's go take a look. So if we refresh this, so we'll set this to true for now. And then we can see that by default, it's set to dark mode, uh, which is great. So we know what mode it's on, but what if we want to switch it? If we go to current mode and light. We can see that that now is uh, in light mode, but we need a actionable element to be able to switch between the two. And we have the perfect one. We can use icon button from MUI. Let's go back here, switch these back, go to the theme toggler, so you can see here, we've added our icon button. Now we are using SAS styling for this. We are using CSS modules for the class name and we're using it in a very clever way, giving it a specific module name. We're instead using a variable property here called current mode. And what this means is if the user selects light mode, then a style will be created or a class name will be created as dot light or dot dark if they choose dark. So we'll just need to make sure that this is imported from our style sheet that we created earlier. So that'll be theme toggler.module.sass. And we'll go in, add those styles in a moment. Uh, and color mode here is essentially coming from React context. So we need to just add that context now. So we'll import React. So we get use context with it. And then we've got our two icons that we're pulling in from Material UI. So let's add the imports for that as well. There we go. Uh, so now that this is added, let's quickly go add the styles uh, in the theme toggler. And all we're doing with this is we're just styling the icons um, because they're essentially font icons. And changing the color here will change the color. Uh, will change the color of the actual icon button. Let's go take a look. So this is what it looks like on the actual page, our theme toggler component in the top right. And if we click it, it now switches between the themes. After all the work we've done with React context, local storage, and prop drilling uh, those values into the header component and then into the theme toggler component, passing it all the way down, we can now switch between themes. So let's see what this looks like on other pages. So if we sign in and we log in and we go to profile, we can see if we switch between these themes now that this style persists. And if I was to refresh the page, go to light, refresh it again, it's still there. And just like that, we've added our MUI theming to the project. So that's our theming and styling all set up. We've managed to create our light and dark theme. We've able to switch between them with a theme toggler component. We've reset our style sheets with CSS baseline, and we have made the changes persist uh, when the user refreshes or leaves the session and comes back. So that's the core of our theming setup for Curious Courses. Uh, the next stage is creating a courses listing page that we're going to fetch from Strapi. Um, and we're going to make an API for that. That's got a bit more information than what we currently had. Uh, so if you're looking forward to that, make sure to follow me on the hashtag on Twitter, join us on Discord, join our community that is growing there. And also like, subscribe, Click the bell notification for part four when it drops. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.